There are many changes in APCC version 1.5. Some of the biggest differences are in the Setup tab and the bottom of the main window. The user interface now consolidates the mount and driver connections into the connection group box. Support has been added for the GTO CP4, including native and Wi-Fi connections. And APCC now has a new Home and Limits tab. I am Ray Greylack, the author of APCC. In this video, I'm going to show you what you need to know to get your applications connected using APCC version 1.5. Let's go. Take a look at the connection group box. There is now a drop down list box to select the type of connection. If you have a CP4, there will be several options. If you have a CP3, the only option available will be serial because the CP3 only has serial ports. When serial slash USB is selected, you can define a primary and backup COM port, which is the same functionality as in earlier versions of APCC. If you connect to the mount, you may see the new COM events button enabled. Its pink color indicates a possible COM port error has occurred. Clicking the button will bring up the list of errors. Let's try a network connection instead. Note that this will only be available for the CP4. APCC supports two protocols when communicating to a CP4, TCP and UDP. TCP is the more reliable of the two, but requires a lot more overhead. TCP guarantees transfer, or if a transfer fails, an indication that there was a failure. UDP has very low overhead. Replies from the CP4 come back much more quickly, but UDP provides no guarantee that a packet will make it to the CP4. APCC will retry a UDP command if there is no response from the mount. Either protocol should work in most cases, but in general, TCP should be used for Wi-Fi connections, since Wi-Fi is inherently less reliable. For direct LAN connections, UDP should be more than adequate. When TCP or UDP is selected, a Find GTO CP4 button is enabled. Clicking it should bring up to two entries for each CP4 on your network, one for a LAN connection and one for Wi-Fi. However, you won't see the Wi-Fi entry if you have Wi-Fi disabled on your CP4. Also, you won't see a LAN entry if the CP4 is not hardwired connected to your LAN. You can identify the matching entries by the MAC address column, which always shows the wired MAC address and not the Wi-Fi MAC address. You can select the mount connection by clicking on it, then clicking the Select button. If you want to use the name instead of the IP address, uncheck Use IP Address. Using the name adds a little extra overhead because Windows would first have to use the NetBIOS protocol to get the IP address. However, using the name will allow APCC to connect to the mount even if the IP address changes, because NetBIOS will always resolve the name to whatever IP address the mount happens to have. Now let's talk about connecting to the mount. There are two checkboxes here. If Auto Connect is enabled when APCC starts, APCC will automatically attempt to connect to the mount. If Create Virtual Ports first is enabled, APCC will create the virtual ports before connecting to the mount and even if the Auto Connect option is not enabled. Creating the virtual ports first would allow the ASCOM driver to connect to a virtual port. However, the ASCOM driver will not get any responses to commands it sends while APCC is not connected to the mount. Let's try connecting to the mount now. I will use UDP. Notice that the Connect button in the APV2 driver connection box has become enabled. Just to be clear, you do not have to connect APCC to the driver at all. ASCOM clients can still connect to and start the ASCOM driver on their own. If Auto Connect is enabled, APCC will try starting the ASCOM driver after connecting to the mount. For this to work, you must also have Auto Connect enabled for the mount. If Auto Config is checked, APCC will automatically configure a few settings in the driver every time APCC tries to start the driver. Probably the most important parameter is the driver's connect timeout found in the advanced settings of the driver setup. 
If this is set incorrectly, then the driver might time out waiting for APCC to initialize the mount after a power cycle. If you don't want any settings to change, but you want to do a one-time configuration, then click the Now button. Finally, let's try connecting two popular applications, Maxim DLV6 and the SkyX. Note that I have not connected APCC to the driver because it is not necessary to do so. First, here is Maxim DLV6. And now, here is the SkyX. So, if you are new to APCC, I recommend that you start by unchecking all the checkboxes in the connection group box and experimenting by enabling each one at a time to explore what each option does. And if you get stuck, click that question mark icon in the corner, which will bring up help. And thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please direct them to the AP GoTo Yahoo group. Bye for now.